We're now at 7.5. This is the fifth lesson for Chapter 7, and we're going to add and subtract fractions with like denominators. It's really important that you have seen videos 7.1, 2, 3, and 4 that came before this one, and they're linked in the description. We can add and subtract fractions with like denominators by modeling the problem or by adding or subtracting the numerators and keeping the denominators the same. We have 3 fifths plus 1 fifth. We keep the denominator 5, and we just add the numerators. 3 plus 1 is 4. We have 3 1 fifth parts and 1 more. That's going to give us 4 1 fifth parts, 4 fifths. We have 7 eighths minus 2 eighths. We have like denominators here, so we keep the 8 in our answer, and we just think 7 minus 2 is 5. 7 eighths minus 2 eighths is equal to 5 eighths. So remember, the denominator tells us the number of equal parts in all. Denominator 5, so we know there's 5 equal parts in all. And the numerators tell us how many equal parts are shaded. So for 4 fifths, we know 4 of these 5 are shaded. Fractions with common denominators represent holes that are divided into the same number of equal size parts. If our equation is 3 fifths plus 1 fifth, we know that there are 5 equal size parts for one hole. We're adding 3 of them plus 1 more, we have 4 fifths. Our equation is 4 ninths plus 3 ninths. Using a model, we shade 4 of 9 equal size parts. We do 4 of them and then 3 of them, and we count the shaded parts, how many there are in all, for the numerator of our sum. There's 7. We use the same denominator. We can use a fraction strip or bar. Here's one whole. We have 4 ninths plus 3 more 1 ninth parts. We have 7 ninths. When adding or subtracting fractions with like denominators, our answer will keep the same denominator. We have 1 seventh plus 4 sevenths. We can think of the denominator as sliding across to the answer. We just slide it across, and we do the math with the 1 plus 4, that's equal to 5, we have 5 sevenths. We have 5 6 minus 4 6, we keep the 6 and slide it over to the answer, and we do 5 minus 4, which is 1, we have 1 6. We can rewrite a problem from word form into an equation, then solve. So here's our problem in word form, the sum of 1 fourth and 2 fourths. Well, sum is a clue for addition. That's the answer in an addition problem, isn't it? We have 1 fourth plus 2 fourths. We slide the denominator across, we have a 4, and we just add the 1 plus 2, which is a 3. It's equal to 3 fourths. And the difference between 7 eighth size parts and 2 eighth size parts, well, difference is a clue word for subtraction. So we know we're going to write a subtraction equation. We need to find the difference between 7 eighth size parts and 2 eighth size parts. We have 7 eighths minus 2 eighths. We slide the denominator over to our answer, our difference, and we do 7 minus 2, which is equal to 5. We have 5 eighths. We can write the word form of an answer. 8 tenth size parts minus 5 tenth size parts is equal to, we think, well, they're both tenth size parts. We have an 8 minus 5. We're going to keep the same denominator. We have 8 minus 5, which is 3. It's equal to 3 tenth size parts. 8 tenths minus 5 tenths is equal to 3 tenths. We can find the sum or difference, then write them in simplest form if needed. We have 1 fifth plus 3 fifths. It's 
got the same denominator for both fractions, so we know the answer is going to have a 5 for a denominator. We just add the numerators. 1 plus 3 is equal to 4. 1 fifth plus 3 fifths is equal to 4 fifths. Here we have 5 sevenths plus 2 sevenths. They both have the same denominator, so we know our answer is going to have a 7 for a denominator. Now we just add the numerators. 5 plus 2 is equal to 7. Our sum is 7 sevenths. We have the same numerator and denominator. 7 sevenths is equal to 1 whole. When the numerator and denominator are the same number, it's equal to 1 whole. Here we have 11 twelfths minus 2 twelfths. They have the same denominator, so we know our difference is going to have 12 as a denominator. Now we just do the math with the numerators. 11 minus 2 is equal to 9. We can write 9 twelfths in its simplest form by listing the factors of the 9, the numerator, and the factors of the 12, the denominator. The factors of 9 are 1 times 9 and 3 times 3, so we have a 1, a 3, and a 9. And the factors of 12 are 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4, so we have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12, and the factor they have in common is the 3. And we learned in video 6.3 that we now divide the numerator and denominator by that common factor 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. In simplest form, 9 twelfths is equal to 3 fourths. If that was confusing for you, check the description and watch video 6.3 about writing fractions in their simplest form. Emma mixes 5 6 gallon of white paint with 1 6 gallon of red paint to make pink paint. When we mix white and red together, we make pink. She uses 3 6 gallon of the pink paint. How much pink paint is left? We need to combine the amount of white and red paint to know how much pink paint she had. We have 5 6 gallon of white, 1 6 gallon of red. We add 5 6 plus 1 6. They have the same denominator, so we're going to slide that 6 over into our sum. Now we just add the numerators. 5 plus 1 is equal to 6. We have 6 6, same numerator and denominator, so it's actually equal to 1 whole, isn't it? She ends up with 1 whole gallon. Then we need to compare the amount of pink paint she made to the amount she used. She used 3 6. We can write 6 6. We subtract 3 6. We have the same denominator, so we know our difference is going to have a 6 for a denominator. We do the math in the numerator. 6 minus 3 is 3. She has 3 6 gallon left. And we can write this in simplest form. 3 and 6 have a common factor of 3. We do 3 divided by 3, which is equal to 1, and 6 divided by 3, which is equal to 2. She has half gallon left of the pink paint. The denominator won't change because it represents the number of parts the whole thing is divided into. And that amount won't change when we add or subtract parts of the whole, represented by the numerators. When solving fraction equations with like denominators, we only do the operation with the numerators. We have 3 sevenths plus 1 seventh. We just slide that 7 over and think 3 plus 1 is equal to 4. When shading fraction bars to model the problem, make sure to put the shaded parts next to each other without any gaps. This would be the correct way we have 3 6 plus 2 6, that's equal to 5 6 that is shaded. This one was done wrong because there's a gap in the middle. We needed to put them together. 
three six plus two six. Without gaps, it's easier to compare the sum of the fraction to one whole. And you technically could do it this way, but you're just making it harder on yourself. You want to be able to easily compare the shaded parts to one whole, so it's better to do it with no gaps. We need to circle true or false. The equation says 1 third plus 3 six is equal to 5 six. Well, first, do you notice that the denominators are not the same for the add ends? we can use fraction bars to model the problem, we can see that 1 third is equal to 2 sixths. We can rewrite the equation to have like denominators. Then we can add them. If 2 1 sixth parts is equal to 1 third, we can write the 2 sixths for that add end instead of 1 third. And we would have the same denominator, so we could slide the 6 across, then just add the numerators, 2 plus 3, which is equal to 5. We also learned in video 6.2, which is of course linked in the description, how to generate equivalent fractions. We have 1 third, and we want to give it a 6 for a denominator. We ask ourselves 3 times some number is 6, well that would be a 2. The numerator gets jealous and wants to be multiplied by 2 also. We have 1 times 2 is 2. 3 times 2 is 6, we have 2 6, and then we can add it to the 3 6. So, is 1 3rd plus 3 6 equal to 5 6? Yes, when we made the equivalent fraction for 1 3rd, we saw that it was equal to 5 6. So this equation is true. When we need to add fractions and their denominators are not alike, they're not like denominators, we can generate equivalent fractions with multiplication and make them have the same denominator to help us. For this word problem, we need to use higher order thinking skills. It says there was 10 twelfths of a pizza for Emma to share with three friends. If each person ate a different fraction of the pizza, what fractions could represent the amount that each person ate? So we see this pizza, it was cut into 12 pieces, 12 slices, but there's only 10 here, so we have 10 twelfths. It also tells us that Emma shared it with three friends. Well, Emma and three friends, that's four people. Three friends plus one more of Emma, that's four people that shared this 10 twelfths of the pizza. For four people, we need four add-ins that will equal 10 twelfths. It says each person ate a different fraction of the pizza. We have four people, we have four add-ins. So we know the denominator is going to be 12 for these add-ins. It'll be a common denominator because it's sliced into twelfths. We need four add-ins that will equal 10. Four numerators that will equal 10 when we add them together. We can guess and check and try some different amounts to split up to try to equal 10. But remember, each fraction will be different. Each fraction will have a different numerator. We can try different combinations for the numerator to see if they will equal 10. If we try 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, well, that equals 14, so no, that didn't work. We can try 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, that's 3, 4, 5, 6, plus 4 more is 10. Yes, that works. So we can guess and check to see what the numerators could be. We see there are a 1, a 2, a 3, and a 4. Four friends had different fractional sizes of the pizza that was left. One person had 1 twelfth, someone else had 2 twelfths, someone else had 3 twelfths, and someone else had 4 twelfths. And altogether, it equals 10 twelfths. So remember, if you're going to add or subtract fractions with like denominators, just slide that common denominator over into the answer and do the math for the numerator. In our next lesson, 7.6, we're going to rename fractions and mixed numbers. Mixed numbers are fractions that are greater than 1. I hope I'll see you there. Bye.